The 2016 Skyrim modding guide continues with an episode that should be titled Flee, flee for your lives and your warm jammies. We've got NPC AI mods including Wet and Cold by Asoku and Immersive Citizens AI Overhaul. Hey guys and gals, this is Cal from Dream Weasel and welcome back to the 2016 Skyrim modding guide. You know, in the last episode, I did all the work on the city overhaul mods. You know, I did a lot of testing. And in that time, I had to bounce around to all the cities and all the holds. And I ran into a common problem. I would constantly find NPCs, somewhat important NPCs, being killed by vampires. And of course, with vampire attacks, that happens quite a bit. And that reminded me that I had to go ahead and change that and make some changes so that wouldn't happen anymore. And of course, that led me to channel my inner Denethor. Abandon your post! Please save my life! And introduce certain mods such as ones I've used for a long time. And those were namely When Vampires Attack by Arthmore, the destroyer of all bugs. And of course, Run for Your Lives by Arthmore as well, which also covered dragons. So... You know, you have a vampire mod that kind of, you know, whenever a vampire attacks, you had NPCs running for their lives to various homes or to an inn for the most part. And you had the same thing happen whenever a dragon would attack, people would run for cover and you wouldn't have so many NPCs dying. You would have just the guards and those that were kind of scripted in to fight dragons or had better chance of surviving. Go ahead and do so. Well... There are a couple issues with those two mods. Namely, it only covers vampires and dragons. What about, let's say, other dangerous creatures or hostile NPCs? Well, that's one downside of doing that. The other one is there are a couple known bugs with them. And I won't go a lot into them, but let's just say sometimes they can get stuck in the ends. And also, because of testing purposes... It's really hard to show you what happens with that because they are scripted events. In other words, Arthmore designed them so that when those events happen and they are run by scripts, they that would enact behaviors on the NPCs. So with those limitations in mind, I wanted to try out something new. And I found something else that we're going to go over into later on the video because it's the much larger portion of this video. And it does have some caveats as far as what we chose in the last episode. In other words, what town and city hold enhancements you may have added to the game will affect how you decide how you want to implement this certain mod. Before we go into that, I want to go ahead and touch on one other mod, and that is Wet and Cold by Isoku. And now you may remember Isoku's Wet and Cold mod number 27563 is primarily known for adding things like steamy breath or drips to your clothing or frost effects on your clothing or gear and horses and you know adding things like cold weather gear to characters such as cloaks or head wraps or hoods in case it's raining or snowing. But it also is a behavior mod. In other words, it affects the AI just like run for your lives or when vampires attack. It may cause characters or NPCs to go into, you know, out of doors or indoors, depending on the weather. And it kind of does that. But let's go over this real fast because we are going to integrate this mod into what we're doing. And you can see it was initially added to the Nexus in December, or excuse me, November of 2012. And it's had a couple of revisions. And in prior iterations, it was pretty script heavy. Don't worry about it now. It's much lighter on your load. I wouldn't worry about it too much. But you come down, you look at it, and it's going to have some add-ons is the first thing it talks about. These are all mods that add additional features to it, depending on if you have them installed, obviously. SKSE is needed. Uh, Sky UI goes with SKSE if you want to use the MCM. Wet and Cold Ashes, Campfire Complete Camping System, I need. Winter is Coming and Close to Skyrim can all be used with this and it will enhance the effects of wet cold. In other words, it'll add more things to it. And then you go to the overviews. We talked about the drips and the breaths and whether 
NPCs go home or not, and this is an important thing to remember, we'll talk about this in a bit, whether they go home or not, if it's rain or if it's blizzardy. It also adds a bunch of gear if you have the SKSE, and if we all have SKSE, of course, it'll add more gear to it, whether it's, you know, NPCs such as hoods, cloaks, that sort of thing, head wraps, face wraps, that sort of thing. And then it talks about compatibility. If using immersive cities, citizens, and we'll just highlight this right now and give you a highlight of what we'll be doing in the future here. If using immersive citizens, the go home feature from wet and cold will be automatically disabled. But we'll go into that when we talk about the MCM. You, if using Frostfall 2.0 plus the player's drip effects from wet and cold will automatically be disabled because Frostfall will have that feature covered. And of course, some other things that you need to look at. Now, of course, I mentioned that it does have an MCM, so we will go take a look at that. So we have Wet and Cold's MCM menu, and you can see there's the main page right there. You got three categories. You got Wet, Cold, and Ashes Survival. You got Wet first. We'll take a look at that. You can see Wet and Cold status is enabled. You can go ahead and change that if you wanted to. You can have Drips and Soggy Feet, and each of these are graphical effects. You can see the description down below. I'm not a big fan of the, of the Soggy Feet, but you may be doing that. You have options for rain blind. You have full, blur, or disabled. I think blur is probably better. Uh, rain gear option. You have hoods, cloaks, and followers. Each of these are clickable, so you can see those. If you don't want anyone to have hoods in the rain, you're a cruel, mean person, but you can turn it off if you wanted. But, you know, you can turn it back on if you like that. So you have the mode up here. You have default, summer, and winter. You can see the options down there. Summer, all cold-related features will be disabled. Use this option for summer overhauls. And winter, all Skyrim will be considered cold. Use this option for winter overhaul. We'll leave it at default. NPCs, you get the drips and soggy feet also for them. But just remember that, you know, there everything comes with a cost. If you're going to get drips and soggy feet on the NPCs, you're going to, you know, incur some performance issues. And you have go home. Now, what this is talking about is whether all civilians or workers ignore rain. If you are using this with Immersive Citizens AI Overhaul, which we'll be talking about shortly, you want to leave this at disabled. Okay, it's going to go by default anyways. If you have Immersive Citizens AI Overhaul installed, it will know it automatically and set it to disable. Rain gear, you can have no Argonians wear, wear any hoods or anything because it doesn't make a lot of sense or aquatic species. So you have that. Then you have disabled, all races will wear rain gear. No Argonians or followers only will have rain gear. I think Argonians not having rain gear makes sense. And then over here you have level list. Now what this is referring to, you see it's left to right. If you have hoods, you can add them to your level lists and do the same thing with the cloaks. And the cloaks and hoods that are added by wet and cold will be added to the vendors list that are generated by for different selling. Now there's an important caveat to this. And it says at the bottom in the description, after enabling this feature and exiting the menus, level list will be permanently modified. This cannot be undone. So if you were to want to undo it, you'll have to go back to the save prior to installing wet and cold to make the changes to the level list and turn them off or not have them off and then replay it. So this is a one-time only deal, guys. So once you do this, you're stuck with it, unless you want to go back in your save. When you come over to cold, same basic thing. You have different options. You have breasts, disabled, first person, third person, or third person only. I think first person, third person looks the best. We'll leave it there. Blizzard blind, you have options for disabled, for or full or blur. And we'll leave that at blur. As snowy. Snow accumulation effects will, will play on the body during snowfall and swimming in the cold. Dead bodies will become snowy in the cold. It's kind of a nice effect. And then you have strong winds. Movement speed will reduce by 15% of clouds caught in a blizzard. That makes perfect sense. And over on NPCs, breaths, blizzard blind, and snowy. So NPCs will have more difficulty detecting uh, targets during a blizzard. That makes perfect sense. And snowy, snow accumulation effects on the NPCs. Okay. Same thing goes over here, guys. You got different options for cold gear, followers, hoods, cloak, gloves, and then the level list for these. If you want to include these all to your level list for the individual gear, 
that are added by wet and cold. On cold gear, you have disabled all races, no Nords, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. because they're a tough snow bound race. So you can go ahead and put it no Nords and they will not wear any cold gear between 6 a.m. and 8 p.m. Or you can have followers only. No Nords makes sense to me. Ashes survival. You have options here for dusty, dust accumulation, just like the snow. Watery eyes, if you want to make your eyes water during the ash storms. Okay, you can either keep your face down to avoid it or equip goggles. Kind of a neat effect, but I find it really annoying. Goggles, face covers, and followers will get the gear. Same thing over here, the level list, if you want to have it there. Ash gear, disabled, enabled, or followers only for whenever there's an ash storm. Backpacks, traveling NPCs may equip backpacks if their slot is free. If an I need is installed, they may also be equipped with water skins. Okay, so this is one of those integration issues that we talked about. So you got that in survival gear, travel NPCs may equip backpacks if their slot is free, blah, 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 and level list for the backpacks. Goggles and face covers if you want to add them to the level list for, you know, Solstice area. So that's all there is on that. So Wet and Cold has basically one file to install. So you download that with Manager. And we'll go take a look at that in Mod Organizer. You know, I'm leaving all these installed because it's kind of a pain to go through and do all this stuff. You can see I was testing when vampires attack, run for your lives. Those have been disabled. And of course, I still have all the city mods because I was testing all these different things with the different city mods. But you come over to your downloads and you have... Vampires attack. We can go ahead and remove that from view since we don't need it and run for your lives. We can remove that from view. And of course, you have wet and cold. Double click to install, and you're going to get a foam mod. Just open this up a little bit more so you can see it all. Contains the core uh, wet and cold files, and then you have options for wet and cold ashes. You have the high res for cloaks if you're using the add on items that you can get through SKSE. Multi-monitor drip textures, interesting stuff. You can check that if you want to have, you know, some type of multi-monitor setup and modded children hat meshes. If your children mods that you may have or may not have, I don't have any that are affected by this, you would click this if it changed the effects or the size of the children's heads or resize them for whatever reason, you would need to go ahead and click the modded children hat meshes to get them to fit correctly. Other than that, it's a pretty easy install. Go ahead and click install. I'm going to click cancel because I already have it installed right there. Now we'll cover uh, plugins and load order at a later time, but once we get the rest of the mods installed, but we'll go talk about the main mod we're going to be talking about today, and that is Immersive Citizens AI Overhaul by Arnold de Arquinmont, also known as Shura. It is mod number 65013. Now, let me say first off, I am endorsing this mod based off the quality of the mod, not based off of interactions from Shura within the community, which there are some bad feelings. It was introduced in 2015. When you scroll down, it's going to give you a lot of information about it, and I suggest you go ahead and watch some of these videos, and there's two at the top right here. Immersive Citizens AI Overhaul, which is the general overhaul view, the combat state. And then if you go over to the videos tab, he has a number of other ones talking about the survival instinct, more about the social interaction provided by immersive NPCs, AI overhaul, and of course, weather influence, which we were going to discuss concerning wet and cold. When you come back to the main page, you're going to go through the introduction. Immersive Citizens AI Overhaul is a mod which greatly improves the artificial intelligence of friendly NPCs. In other words, the citizens. And these are primarily the name citizens in order to make them act and react like true humans in relation to their environment and to an aggressor. Now, this is very important where when vampire attacks run for your lives only affected vampires and dragon attacks, this will affect any attack from any hostile element, whether it be bandits, other creatures, wolves, saber cats, trolls, whatever it may be, even creatures that are added by other mods, other monster mods that can be added to your game later on. 
And I'm talking about things like Skyrim immersive creatures. So when you come back down here, you're going to read this stuff. And this is the combat state. You can read all this stuff. And I encourage you to read this entire page because it is quite long, but it has a ton of important information. But we're going to primarily deal with a couple different things. And we'll come back up here. The combat state. It talks about the survival instinct and how it basically works. There are some basic rules regarding NPC interactions with aggressors. And you can see some of the basic rules right here. If an NPC is attacked by an aggressor who is 10 levels or more above them, the NPC will flee. If attacked NPC's health is lower than a threshold percentage of that NPC's maximum health, that NPC will flee from the aggressor. Okay, and you can see the different thresholds there. And it all is all based off the type of armor they are wearing. In other words, the more armor they have, the more likelihood they'll survive longer under attack, and their threshold will be set at like 25. If they're just wearing something like a blacksmith apron, they're probably only going to have a damage threshold before they flee a 50% or 40%. That's some of the information there. There are some advanced rules, and this has to do with the type of NPC they are. Civilian NPC, strategist NPC, cautious MP, whoop, cautious NPC, fearless, Khajiit merchants, and sleeping agent NPCs. And all these have their own parameters that change their behavior. And that's all very important because a citizen's almost always going to flee if the maximum level is 10 or more, while strategists may do a few things like stand back, cast a few spells whether they're cautious, you can read all these different things. So that's all very important information about how the NPC will react to a threat. Combat styles, you can see there's some notes on combat styles, warrior NPCs, that sort of thing. And then we get into the standard state. The rest of this information has to do with how the character reacts to the environment and how they react in the world. The first section goes to survival instinct, all right? So this will be important when we talk about light versus full versions. The light version will contain survival instinct, and it'll also contain the weather kind of interactions. The full version will talk more about the standard state, and this is human behavior. And you can see full version only, full version only, and you can get down through these different things. And what I found interesting about this mod is that it will change the NPCs in the areas affected to give them a life. And if you watch the videos, it will tell you more about that. But it changes how they will do things. Certain NPCs that you only found in one place, you'll find them different places. And they'll do different things. So it's kind of interesting how it all works. You know, social interaction between NPCs. They'll now gather at certain times of the day for sharing a meal or to meet up to someone, kind of talk. So it's all interesting information, and I found it fascinating. So you can go through and read what each of the ones do for the different types of people they are. They even have horse riders that they'll grab a horse and they'll go run around for a bit. It's really fascinating. The enhanced social interaction is only available in the full version. You see, they'll have random conversations, families. NPC dependent, NPC greetings, and then the weather influence. You can see it says it doesn't have anything about full version because it is included in the light version as well. And you can see the quest givers, you have full version only. When an NPC gives a PC a quest, he will continue to lead a normal life. For now, this applies only to the following quests, these sort of things right here. And then other behavior that are in the full version only that affects Heimscar, guards, and dog interaction. Different times for opening of services, and then different miscellaneous things. This is all very important stuff to look at. The modifications overview talks about what is going on with the different areas and whether the full features have been implemented or whether it's just survival instinct only. So if you have green, all AI is fully overhauled and all features have been implemented. And then yellow, you can see just the survival instinct go home for the weather and the combat styles. Areas in green include Falkreath, White Run, Riverwood, Rorikstead, Darkwater Crossing, Honeybrew Meadery, Battleborn Farm, Chill Foro Farm, Half Moon Mill, Lorius Farm, Pelagia Farm, Jorvasker, 
and the Khajiit caravan camps. And all the ones in yellow you see here are included also in the light version. So green it has the light and full features and all the yellow ones are light only. Anything in gray has not been changed. I guess they're kind of waiting for maybe updates where they'll change some of the interactions like in the orc strongholds. But you can see that also it will change the behavior of unofficial NPCs. They can go on that. So it will actually change ones. And I tested it with inconsequential NPCs and the NPCs added by ETAC. And it does work. So we'll get more into ETAC later on. Compatibility and Synergy. And this is incompatible plugins. And there's going to be a lot to talk about on this one. You know, you can read all this stuff and it's all very good information, but I'm also going to have you click on this site right here and you just right click and open it and it'll take you to this page. And this is about Immersive Citizens AR Overhaul, Compatibility and Load Order. And this is important information. I suggest you read all of this. And it talks about incompatible mods. And if you click on Spoiler, you can see all of the ones that are incompatible. And you can see there's quite a few that we may have used in the past like JK Skyrim, right? JK's Whiterun, JK's Riverwood, and JK Rorikstead, because remember, they're listed under the green section up here, just so you know what you're getting into. The whole city overhaul is incompatible. And just keep these in mind. Read through this list and see if they apply to you. There is a special note about ETAC, and that's expanded towns and cities, by the way. And it says to only use the no ends version, and the following plugins are incompatible. Riverwood, Rorkstead, Darkwater Crossing, Fall Creek, and Immersive Right Run. Now, here's the thing, is that if you're using the full version, probably having these would be considered incompatible. And if you remember in the previous version, I did the no ends version anyways, because I kind of knew this video was coming. So just keep that in mind. The full version will not work with these. If you're using the light version, there's a couple caveats to that. And we'll talk briefly about them right now. I went ahead and installed Immersive Citizens AI Overhaul Lite with this caveat in mind. I wanted to test to see if the survival instincts, combat style, and weather did work appropriately with these modules to see if they worked. And they did. So what happens sometimes is the NAM meshes are off, especially in towns like, let's say, Dawnstar, because it moves buildings or whatnot. The NAV meshes may not be fully compatible with the NAV meshing requirements of the full version, but it seems to work pretty well with behavior modules for the light version. So just keep that in mind that when he talks about incompatible modules for some of these things, such as JK Skyrim, just take a look at them if you want to use the light version that doesn't have all the full features and see if it works real well with you. And it may be a good substitute for things like when vampire attacks or run for your lives. All right, so just keep that in mind. Slightly incompatible, you can see the list right there and I don't see anything there. There are major issues. Of course, JK's light may have issues with nav meshing. And JK's Falkreath is probably slightly incompatible because it doesn't change a lot in Falkreath. But you see those as well. Compatibility overview. And we'll skip over this in a little bit. You can actually just read this stuff. Know what you're getting into and kind of give you an idea of mods. Other mods that might be not covered, but change things that change these cities in green and orange that may change how the mod interacts. All right, just keep that in mind. Compatible or supported plugins. And these are a list of compatible plugins. And it's quite long, but I wanted to point out something to you here. Interesting NPCs must be positioned higher than my plugin. We'll talk about that when we get into load order. And then, of course, Immersive College of Winterhold is very popular. And you see that is compatible as well. And up here, what's the Enhanced Landscapes is compatible. We know we use that. And then Dawn of Skyrim collection and this is the original version not the director's cut if you're using the director's cut the light version does work on the npcs added by dawn of skyrim director's cut but the full version is not however dawn of skyrim the original collection 
does work with the full version. Just read through the rest of the stuff and there's some important things to remember about it. Kind of get through it. There's a lot of good information here. Sure, I did a very good job on documenting all these different things. So we're gonna go back to the main page and we are going to continue on down. Installation, update, and load order. You can see there's information on there. Installation is pretty straightforward. We'll get into that when we go into Model Organizer, but I want you to be able to see that. And then update, reboot, all this stuff. Here's the thing, is installation, update, and load order. When you are installing Immersive Citizen's AI overhaul for the first time, if you're using the full version, that affects behavior, social interaction, that sort of thing, you are going to need to start a new game, a brand new character. If you are using the light version, I tested it with both a brand new character to see if it worked, and it worked. I tested it with Fiona and an existing save, and the light version seemed to work for the most part. I saw a few little things. I don't know if they're normal, but I saw a few little interactions with stuff that I'm like, what is that guy doing? I don't know. For the most part, it seemed to work just fine. So load order, full version only. And this is very important because if you're going to be using this load order for the full version, you'll need to follow some simple rules. The main plugin, Immersive Citizens AI Overhaul, must be positioned above Dindalod, ELFX, ELE, Realistic Lighting Overhaul, and any provided compatibility patches. And there's one inside the full mod. And then the main plugin, Immersive Citizens AI Overhaul, must be positioned below, below any plugin which edits Breeze Home, Honeyside, Vindral, Harjum, whatever this is. And more information is available here. You can go ahead and click that to go to another article. And then Enhanced Skyrim Factions, Interesting NPCs, which I tested with it. And you need, I'll kind of show you how to get through that whole process. Requiem and Turing Carriages, all right? So just so keep those, those things in mind. Just remember the load order is for the full version only. If you're using a light version, Loot does things just fine, and we'll go into that. Frequency act, ask questions. You can go and read all this stuff up. If you have any questions, performance better, blah, blah, blah. Troubleshooting, read all this good, very good information, and just get through it all. So let's go ahead and go back up and we are going to go to the file section. You can see there's some old versions here. There's nothing, you're not missing much here. So it's only one file to download. It's not that big actually. And you can see it was updated this summer, not that long ago. So August 31st of 2016. And you would click download that with manager. All right, here we go. Immersive Citizens AI overhaul, double click to install. And you're gonna see a couple different things. You're gonna have the full version and the light version. And depending on which one you choose, of course, the light version has the survival components, including combat, fleeing when appropriate, and the weather one. And the full version is all of the everything in together. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell you to click which one you want. And I'm going to go show you what happens when you do it, because I'm going to just ignore this right now, because I have them both installed to make things easy. When you, I'm just going to deactivate this one, activate the light version. You can see it, I installed them twice, so I would just remember what we have. When you open this up, you're going to get one ESP, and that's the overhaul light. File tree, basically that's all you're getting, a BSA and an ESP. If you were to go ahead and activate that one, you're going to see it over here at the bottom. If you run loot, you don't really need to worry about too much. Just let loot do its thing and it's going to order it correctly. And there it goes, it threw it right up here. It doesn't matter where it goes on this because it is the light version. So that's all there is to on that. But just remember that we were talking about two different installs here. You have the light version and then we're now going to talk about the full version. If you install the full version, you're gonna get two things. So let's double click on this. You can see what you're getting. You're gonna have an optional ESPs. You're gonna have Immersive Citizens AI Overhaul. And then you're gonna also have an Immersive Citizens ELE patch. Now, of course, I'm running ELE. If you are not running ELE, put it up, just so you know what you're getting on these things when you install it. 
when you look at it on your plugin list, you're going to have a couple of different things to worry about. Remember, you're going to have to have ELE follow AI overhaul and ELE, which is up, up here, right? That's ELE right there. So when looting it, you're going to see a couple of different things and you're going to have to follow some rules because there's also, remember, 3D NPCs is right there. Let's go ahead and run loot and see what happens. It's made the changes. It didn't really know what to do with the patch. So I'm going to go ahead and start, you know, worry about this in just a second. But let's go find Immersive Citizens AI Overhaul, which is right there. And you can see it is above ELE. So the first thing we're going to do is move this patch up because Loot didn't really know what to do with it. So it can go anywhere as long as it's after ELE. So I would go ahead and place it up here for right now. You can go ahead and reorder loot later. It will probably drop it down during the 50s. I think I saw it go drop down to the 50s when reordering it this way. But just remember, you can always throw it up and loot will push it down if it needs to. The one of the things you'll notice is according to the special rules, remember 3D NPC needed to be above Immersive Citizen's AI overhaul. Now, how do we fix that? Well, there's a couple different ways to do it. You could try to go ahead and set some metadata in Loot to do it correctly. And it's going to throw the rest of your load order off a bit because it's trying to say, well, we want to load this after this. If you if you try to say, well, I want Immersive Citizen's AI overhaul to load after 3D NPCs, it's going to throw it below ELE, which is wrong, of course. So what I decided to do is rather than go into the data for the ESP itself by changing the metadata it's there. I just went ahead and moved it up above above Immersive Citizen's AI overhaul and I locked it. When you run loot again, you take a look at it, it didn't change anything. It threw the Immersive Citizen's AI overhaul patch somewhere. There it is, 58. But it kept these two in their correct order. Not much to worry about there. You can still see Immersive Citizen's AI overhaul is above ELE and above the other stuff that it needs to be. But, you know, it's now 3D NPC is above Immersive Citizen. So that's working very well. I'm just going to leave it like that. That's sometimes the simplest solution you can do is just lock them in and see what loot does with the other stuff around it, and it didn't really change much. Now, wet and cold. Remember in the MCM I showed you the disable the go home feature? Just remember that is done in your MCM. Just verify that it checked it, that because it will recognize immersive citizens if you, in your playthrough, it should have it disabled by default, but just go ahead and double check it. You may be asking, because I didn't really give you what I'd be running with my personal setup, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be running the Dawn of Skyrim original collection. I'm not going to be running Expanded Towns and Cities just because of the interactions with Immersive Citizens AI Overhaul full. And that's how I'm going to run it. Now, as far as moving these up, you can see conflicts on this. It doesn't really do much. Excuse me. Just come on. You guys stay with me here. It's changing the unofficial legendary patch. I can go ahead and move these up. And I'll figure out some place later. Probably end up moving them up quite a bit, depending on where they are. But for right now, I think Enhanced Landscapes would be a good place to put that. And then Immersive Citizens AI Overhaul. I'm going to slide it up around where 3D NPC is. That's kind of how it is. So like I said, if you're wondering what I'm going to be running, it's going to be Dawn of Skyrim Original Collection. I will not be running ETAC or JK, JK Skyrim, either the light or the full version. And I'll be running the full Immersive Citizens AI Overhaul. Full version so I can see all the interactions and I look forward to playing with that and seeing what goes on. Because it really is a fascinating mod and it's interesting to see what all the different characters do. So that's it for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed that episode. My name is Cal, I'm from Dirty Weasel, and I'm signing off.